Hey everyone, my name is Rosie and welcome back to my channel. Today I had the idea it might be fun if we made some birthday cards. Now I've been making custom cards for as far back as I can remember. One, I just love making things. Two, cards can be incredibly expensive sometimes. And three, and more importantly, I think it's really special to create a one-of-a-kind sort of custom card that can be tailored to the person you're giving a gift or just a card to. So I've always found it really fun and really special to hand make cards for people. So I thought, why not make some together? So today we're going to make some wacky birthday cards and without further ado, let's jump into it. Now I'm going to attempt to keep all of these just the size of a normal 8.5 by 11 piece of paper folded it in half just to keep things simple. If we end up finding, you know, something that ends up being bigger than this, we can explore a different option. But I think just to keep things simple, we'll just try to stick to it this size. Although I think we can do it vertically or horizontally. That would also make a nice card. Also, this is a time where I really love to use big typography for magazines. So flipping through these and finding cool typography that we can cut out and use to spell either happy birthday or someone's name, something like that. Magazines like this normally have really fun spreads with giant type and I think we'll be able to cut some of those out and that will be really fun. So I'm going to look through a couple magazines first to pull out typography but I'll also be looking if there are cool images. But let's start there. I don't normally use typography in my designs but I think in a birthday card this is the perfect place for that. Oh if you wanted to make a thank you card you could take you know the thank you text from there. <laughs> Maybe we'll do that. I know I was um, thinking just doing birthday cards, but maybe we'll also do a thank you card just because I found this. I don't know, we'll think about it. All right, I found a lot of great typography that we're gonna be able to use to spell out certain things. Then I also found a couple images that I just liked that I thought maybe we could use on the card or as a background or something like that. I found two versions of this guy standing on his head, or I guess like doing a handstand. And I thought either we could have him upside down and maybe the text is balancing off his foot or maybe we flip him upside down and have the text on top, like he's pushing up onto the text. So I just thought he was interesting, so I pulled both sizes of those. I also found this guy on a motorcycle and thought this was just kind of a fun image. And maybe we could draw a speech bubble and have it say happy birthday in the speech bubble and maybe we can have something that says like rock on or have fun or something. But I just really thought this image was really fun and would be a great background. Then I also found this mushroom candle kind of scene, which I thought had some good space up here where we could write happy birthday. And then I thought maybe we could nestle some things into the scene. Maybe we could have some little dancers or fairy type people coming out of the candles. And then I also found a couple of disco balls in some of these home decor scenes. And I thought maybe we could cut those out and put them within the scene, maybe hanging down from the top or something to make it feel a little bit party-y. So it goes along with the happy birthday a little bit. Those were the things that I found so far. I think I'm gonna start cutting some stuff out. We have enough stuff to make a couple cards. I also think I need to find just a couple more images, like something to go with this dude. But maybe we'll start with the little mushroom candle scene because I feel like we have a lot for that. I collected a lot of stuff just from a couple magazines. So let's start cutting some stuff out. Now there's a couple different ways in which you can use text. 
you can do a version that's sort of like, I don't know, one of those ransom kidnapping notes where you cut each letter out in a square and have a bunch of different squares and you align those together. Or you can be a little bit extra like me and cut out every single letter. It takes forever, but you just go around and you cut out every single letter and it looks really clean. And I just prefer that style, but it kind of depends on what your card is looking like. It might actually be fun to lean into that blocky, really different style by having all the letters in squares. And that might go along perfectly with the type of layout that you've picked. So I think it really depends on what you're working on, but I'm gonna do the very manual task and very tedious task of cutting each of these out individually. <laughs> Now, are there a lot of easier ways to do this? Sure are. You could just write the letters with a marker. That would probably be really fast. There are stickers, there are stencils. There are so many different ways you could add text to a card. <laughs> But for whatever reason, I just really like the look of this. I like the look of having all these different types of letters and the different colors and thicknesses. I just feel like it makes it more whimsical and more fun and more unique. And that sort of go, you know, goes along with the type of art that I make. I don't know, I'm just a fan of, you know, cutting out all the individual letters and creating, you know, sort of your custom text. And you get to pick and choose which letters you like and the layout and sort of how it fits around. And I don't know, I just think it's so fun and whimsical. So I'm really happy with the letters we have here for the happy birthday. I think that that's really fun. And I also really love the disco balls we found. I might at the end you know, add some little light lines up to the top of the card to sort of indicate that those are hanging. But we do still need something to cover up down here. This text down here, I think is a little bit distracting. But then also I wanna add some sort of subject. So I don't know if it's someone dancing out of this candle or maybe it's something crawling around on the floor here. We gotta hunt for some things to add to this. So I've got some new elements here that we can add to the scene. I'm thinking of putting a mushroom down here. That way it goes in with the scene with the other mushrooms, but it's covering up a lot of this text. So I think that might work. It's not perfect, but I think it will work. Then we also have a couple of dancers here that I thought could be in the party. And this girl maybe could fit somewhere around here. Maybe this girl is back here. I will say a couple of these people are maybe like a little bit too big, but I think if I tuck her feet down behind that candle and that mushroom, she might be hidden, sort of. And then this guy, maybe he is, you know, sort of really tucked behind that mushroom, like he's sort of coming out of it. That actually might work. I was kind of going for sort of a party atmosphere. So I think that that is pretty good. I do also have a couple more disco balls that thought maybe we'd want to add somewhere, but I kind of think that we're at max capacity here on this piece. There's already a lot going on. So maybe we don't need it. But I will say down here, I'm not loving how this text is peeking out down here. So I do have a couple of scraps that we cut off from this image to make it smaller. So I'm wondering if I could just take a section of this and cover up some of that text. Oh yeah, you won't even know. <laughs> That's totally hidden now. Then maybe also I can put a little bit over that brown circle just to, I don't know, cover that up a little bit. It's really not necessary. It's just kind of a, I guess a personal preference for me.
Oh yeah, she looks really great tucked in right there. That is pretty good. So I think we're all set with this piece. I think there's definitely enough going on and I really think I've captured that sort of party atmosphere. I also really like that the three people I picked are all black and white. And I feel like that goes really well with the disco balls and just plays off the background really nicely. So I don't know, this is just a really fun card and there's a couple stuff we have to do and glue it up, but I want to move on to another card right now. Now I did wanna to try to keep everything to this size of a card, but this image is, you know, a little bit too big for that, but I really like it. So I'm going to make an exception and move to a larger piece of paper and fold this one in half and it will be oversized, which I think is fine because I really do like this image and I wanna be able to use as much of it as possible. All right, I think that's pretty good. So our card will be about this size. Now I'm thinking that we will put a big happy birthday here and maybe try to create a speech bubble out of something. That might be fun. But I also think that we need to add a couple of silly things to this piece. So I know that there are a couple of mouths and eyeballs and some body parts in this book. Maybe we can give him a funny mouth. Let's see if I can find them. Yeah, here they are. So there's a couple in here. One of these two might work. This one might be a little bit too big. And I do think that, you know, the bigger, the funnier, but there is a point where it's too big, where it doesn't look real. Well, it's never gonna look real, but I think that this one might be a little bit too big. So maybe this one, but I also think there are more mouths in this book. So let's try to find them. Here they are. Maybe that one. I think that maybe those couple are our best bets. So I'm gonna cut, I think I really just need to cut them out to see because it's really gonna depend. It's possible none of these are going to work. Like that just, I think is maybe a little bit too big. This one is going the wrong way, which obviously I don't know why I thought about that. This one is, okay, let's cut this one out because it might be funny. The other thing I can do is go back through the magazine and find, you know, a full picture of a person whose mouth is open and we can just steal their mouth. But let's see if this is gonna work first because that would be, you know, the most convenient. Okay, that's not, no, that's not gonna work. Okay, neither of those work, which is unfortunate. Let's go back through some of the magazines to see if we can find a person whose mouth is a very wide open. Potentially, we might be able to take this woman's mouth, maybe. It might be the right size, and so it will probably look ridiculous, but might fit in a little bit better. Let's just see. I feel like you really just gotta try, because you never know. It's sort of a better size, I think, than some of the other mouths we were looking at. It's not perfect. I also found this transparent divider in one of the magazines, and I thought that maybe we could use this as the background for the speech bubble, perhaps. I know you could do a similar thing with tissue paper, but I found this, so maybe we will use that. So I took the mouth off of this guy because I thought it wasn't quite right. And I think it maybe is funnier without it. And it's just with his normal face. I also like the letters I have here and I like this layout, but I do think this is missing something. Maybe I got to think about this one a little bit more because I think it's fun and I could stop here, but I do feel like maybe we need to do more with it. 
I gotta think about this one for a bit. So I'm in the middle of cutting out letters for this guy to hold up. And I was thinking originally that these were sort of like building block, but I don't think the look of this is going to look very good. And I don't think it's gonna look like blocks. So I think what I wanna do instead is try to find an object or something that he's holding up and then we'll put the words inside the object. My initial thought was like, let's find an elephant or something. I, I don't know, something heavy, notoriously heavy to add to this. I think Think will be good. We might have to go to the smaller version of this image, depending on the image that we find for him to be holding up. So I found a couple of things that I think might be fun. I found this sea elephant who's looking mighty happy. And I thought maybe we could use this guy to be lifting up the sea elephant and the sea elephant's the one that's, you know, saying happy birthday to you. And then I was thinking we need a background. So I was thinking, what if we put them in the water? And so it's like the guy's lifting the sea elephant out of the water to wish you a happy birthday. So I kind of like that story. So I have two different backgrounds here that we can try to see which might work a little bit better. They're two very different color tones. So we're gonna have to start cutting stuff out and see which one works. Also just putting this on here, I think we do have to go with the smaller guy. But again, let's get everything cut out and see if any of this is gonna work. Maybe we use this background instead. It might be less busy than the other ones. I don't know, maybe I don't like this background either. I don't know. Oh, tucking his feet in, that made a huge difference, I think. I think I wanna try to find some smaller letters. I think some of these are too big to fit in this space, but the smaller they are, the harder it is for me to cut them out, so. But I feel like this is a good size. And here are the three cards that we made today. They're all wacky and weird and fun. And I know any of my friends would be very happy to receive one of these. Now, normally when I make a card for a specific person, I do tend to add their name to the card just to add, you know, that special touch that it was specially made for them. But these are just sort of generic cards and I can always add a name to these later once we're closer to a date. 
for a specific person's birthday. So I hope that you all enjoyed this video. Maybe I inspired you to make some cards for your friends and family. So I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.